the cerebellum, the part of your brain mainly responsible for movement and coordination. In this video, we will discuss how to train your cerebellum by stimulating new growth of brain cells in this part of the brain using the power of neuroplasticity. So why is neuroplasticity important for our brain and cerebellum health? Well, it used to be believed not too long ago that the human brain stops developing and growing when we reach adulthood. Thanks to modern research in neuroscience and the field of brain research, we now know that the brain continues to develop and change throughout our entire life, especially in people who continue to learn new things. This is done through a rewiring process called neuroplasticity. And this is your brain's ability to adapt and change in response to external stimulus and personal experience. To strengthen our cerebellum, we want to activate more neuroplasticity within our brain. Lots of different processes are going on in our brain during neuroplasticity. But one of the main driving factors is a substance called BDNF. BDNF stands for Brain Derived Neurotrophic Factor. And this acts like a sort of hormone to stimulate three processes within your brain. These three key processes are repair, of damaged or removal of damaged brain cells. Number two is the maintenance of existing brain cells. And number three is the stimulation of the growth of new brain cells. This is also called neurogenesis. We can increase the amount of BDNF in our brain by doing activities such as regular exercise. And there's plenty of scientific evidence to show that BDNF is increased when we do do exercise. When we hear of brain cells, most of us will think of neurons in our brain and these are responsible for sending electrical signals to different parts of our brain. But there are also different types of brain cells, including a subgroup called glial cells. Glial comes from the Greek word meaning glue because they were initially thought to sort of stick different parts of the brain together and connect them. Thanks to modern brain research, we now know that this is true. They do help to have a structural integrity, but they also play several different roles, including supplying nutrients and oxygen to our neurons. And more recently, glial cells have been discovered to be heavily involved in the process of neuroplasticity which is what we are most interested in focusing on today. One particular type of glial cells are called astrocytes. They're called that because they kind of look like stars as they branch out. Astrocytes have been shown to be heavily involved in the destruction or phagocytosis of neuronal synapses in our brain. So astrocytes are heavily involved in this rewiring process in our brain. The great study that I read about this topic was done in 2003 by Chung Won Suk from South Korea. And this was published in Nature, one of the most stringent and highest respected scientific journals within the world. It is now widely accepted within the neuroscience community that neuroplasticity is very much real and it's more of a question of how we can activate that. So let's get into that part. We can train our cerebellum in particular by doing highly coordinated activities. So think of things like tennis, table tennis or ping pong if you're in the US, dancing and yoga. All these things require high amounts of coordination and movement, which helps to stimulate the cerebellum and encourage new brain growth within this area. It's not just limited to these activities, there's plenty of other things which involve movement and coordination like weightlifting and a plethora of other things that you may personally enjoy. The key is to pick something that you enjoy so that you can stick to it and make it a routine. As you gradually and incrementally increase the intensity of your workouts in whatever you want to train, this increase in difficulty stimulates neurogenesis and neuroplasticity within your cerebellum. So it's very similar to training a muscle like you would do in a gym, but it's training your brain and cerebellum through strengthening these neuronal pathways and coordination circuits within your brain. Another great benefit to all these cerebellar training activities is that they help you to burn fat. So not only are they beneficial for our mental health and brain health, but they're also helpful for our physical health. So these activities help to have a healthy body and mind. Did you know that you could train your cerebellum before watching this video? What is your favorite highly coordinated activity to train your cerebellum? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more brain training content and for more ways to unlock neuroplasticity in your brain, check out this video next. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you guys in the next video.